Hey everyone, welcome to day 18 of my trip to Run and Rajasthan. After a night tour of Jaipur city yesterday evening, Mr. Arun picked me up from my hostel the next day early morning to have a detailed visit to some of Jaipur's iconic tourist destinations. On that chilly winter morning, we headed to the old part of the city that had the maximum number of monuments. We passed monuments like the Hava Mahal and other structures in the old part of the city to reach our first destination, the Jal Mahal. The Jal Mahal or the Water Palace is situated in the middle of Mansagar Lake. It was constructed in the 1600s and then later renovated by Maharaja Jai Singh II. Mr. Arun, my guide, a wildlife expert as mentioned in the previous video, began to show me the different varieties of bird in and around the Mansagar Lake. More than the Jal Mahal, I was fascinated by the variety of birds in and around the lake and Mr. Arun's expertise and knowledge in this field. Even though I don't remember the names of many of these species, distinguishing them from one another and learning about their habitat and behaviors was simply amazing. I'm sure this place is a bird watcher's delight. Next, we came to the place I was looking forward to the most. Ever since I learned about Jandra Mandar in school, I was always fascinated by it and wanted to visit at least once in this lifetime. Constructed during the 1700s, the Jandra Mandar is a collection of 19 astronomical instruments built by the then king Jai Singh, the founder of Jaipur. These instruments were used for measuring time, predicting eclipses, tracking location of major celestial bodies orbiting around the sun, the altitudes of planets and many other things. This is the Vrihat Samrat Yendra, the world's largest sundial. It measures time in intervals of 2 seconds using shadow cast from the sunlight. Amazing, isn't it? The size of the structure is so huge that it is difficult to tell how it works without the help of a guide. And since I was alone, hiring a guide was very expensive. the structure to take a detailed look. The level of detail in the measurements engraved on the marble in this huge structure is simply mind-blowing. For reference, this is how small I look in front of a part of this huge structure. Standing inside the world's largest sundial was itself accelerating. This is the observation deck of the world's largest sundial, the Vrihat Samratyendra or the great king of instruments. is the Rasi Valaya Yantra. These are 12 dials or instruments that measure the coordinates of stars, planets and all the 12 constellation systems. Each of these structures is unique in design, shape and form. instruments 
is used to detect direction and to determine the location of the pole star. This is the Jai Prakash Yantra. These are two hemispherical bowl based sundials that has markings of the inverted images of the sky. It measures altitudes, hour angles, declinations of various celestial bodies. The metal plate suspended on top of the instrument casts a shadow below which helps in tracking the sun's movement. This is the Nadi Valaya Yantra. These are two circular parallel sundials depicting the north and south hemispheres. With this arrangement, the sun illuminates the northern phase during the summer months and the southern phase during the winter months. There are other smaller instruments like the Kakolgati Yantra and the model of the solar system for display there. This is the Yantra Raj. It's a bronze structure used to calculate the Hindu calendar. This is the Kranti Vrita Yantra. It is used to measure the latitude and longitude of celestial bodies. This is the Leku Samrat Yantra. As the name suggests, this is a smaller sundial and is less accurate than the larger one. This is the Chakra Yantra, a device that helps in identifying noon time at four observatories around the world. This is the Kapali Yantra. It is a complex instrument that helps in measuring the coordinates of celestial bodies in different coordinate systems. This is the Digamasa Yantra. It is a pillar in the middle of two concentric outer circles. It is used to measure and calculate the time of sunrise and sunset forecast. This is the Rama Yantra. It is used to observe the position of any celestial object. In the daytime, it is used to note the sun's position and the night, the position of various stars and planets. Roaming in and around Jantar Mandar, I grabbed a quick cup of lassi before heading to the next destination. Isarlath is a tower built in the 1700s by King Ishwari Singh to celebrate his victory over the Mewar and Marathas. It's an octagonal shaped structure overlooking the entire city of Jaipur. Once you get to the top after climbing a few flights of steps, you'll get a view of the entire Jaipur city. The Isarlath is 7 story tall and gives a good 360 view of the entire city. Taking in a good view of the entire Jaipur city, I decided to climb down and head to the next spot. From here, I walked to the next spot, the Hava Mahal. 
Baba Mahal is a palace situated next to the city palace in Jaipur. This iconic structure made of red and pink sandstone was built by the then king Pratap Singh during the 1700s. As soon as I entered and walked up to the main area, I saw a group of people gathered around some musicians. Curious to know what was happening, I decided to have a closer look. The structure of Hava Mahal is similar to the honeycomb. It has 953 small decorated windows also called Jarakas. It was used to allow the royal ladies to observe the everyday life and festivals happening in the street below without being seen. These windows decorated with intricate lattice work looks beautiful. From the front portion of the palace, you can see other monuments like the Jantam Mantar and Isarlath. After roaming in and around the Hava Mahal, we headed to the next destination before lunch. The structures in this part of the city are built with pink and red sandstones that gives Jaipur its name, the Pink City. Next we came to the Albert Hall Museum. The Albert Hall Museum was named after King Albert Edward who laid the foundation stone on 1876. It was opened to the public in 1887. This museum was particularly built to showcase the art of Jaipur. Albert Hall has a very rich collection of artifacts that includes paintings, jewellery, carpet, ivory, stone, metal sculptures, crystal work and even an Egyptian mummy. It takes a good one and a half to two hours to roam around and see the entire museum. 
even though the museum was primarily built to showcase the craftsmanship of people of jaipur the collection expanded to include armory sculptures art pottery musical instruments woodwork and stone work from countries like japan sri lanka germany austria and even egypt gone into these artifacts is simply amazing These artifacts not only blows your mind with its level of detail but also gives you a glimpse of the history and culture of the parts of the world where it is from. sculptures armory and pottery the second floor has clothing carpets woodwork stone work paintings musical instruments and a variety of other things this egyptian mummy is one of the main attractions of this museum collection here includes the coins from gupta mughal and the british periods after the armory this section of musical instruments was one of my favorite exhibits in the museum of the albert museum we headed for lunch before we headed back to the hostel that evening we came back to amar jawan jodi for a detailed visit as we had missed few of the exhibits the previous night there were few screens displaying videos about achievements of our army throughout its existence There were few exhibits dedicated to our war heroes. After 
After spending some time in the war museum, we headed back to the hostel and call it a day. That's it for today's video. I hope you guys liked it. See you in the next one where we explore more of Jaipur's iconic destinations.